This video covers arithmetic operators and precedents, also known as order of operation, as implemented by Visual Basic. Visual Basic has the following standard set of mathematical operators. Add, subtract, multiply, divide, and exponents. Well, with a couple of extra features. For example, in Visual Basic, we have one way of doing a division for floating point numbers, and we have another way of division for integers. For integers, we also have a remainder operator called mod. Here is an example of how Visual Basic treats division with integers and floating point. For example, if I say dim q1, I'm using q for my quotient, dim q1 is integer equals 27 divided by 4, the quotient is a 6, and notice the backslash there. The backslash is telling us that Visual Basic is going to be using an integer division. I'll also do a dim r1 for my remainder, dim r1 as integer equals 27 mod 4. So 27 divided by 4 gives us a quotient of 6 and a remainder of 3. When I'm doing floating point division, such as working with doubles, 27 divided by 4, the quotient is 6.75. I don't have any remainder, but I do have digits past the decimal when I'm working with floating point using the double data type. When working with double numbers, if you have something like 27.0 divided by 4, well, 4 is an integer, but since one of the numbers is a double, that 4 gets promoted to a 4.0. Or if I have 27 integer divided by 4.0, the 27 gets promoted to a double. It works the same way as if I had 27.0 divided by 4.0. In each case, the quotient is going to be 6.75. There are certain cases where we may lose some precision. For example, Visual Basic promotes an integer to a double, but will round a double to the next integer value. For example, if I compute a quotient of 6.75 and then try to store that double number into an integer, it's going to round up to a 7. However, if I have 6.25, that's going to round down to an integer of 6. So somewhere we're going to end up either losing some possible precision, we're going to lose all the numbers past the decimal place if we take a double and store it into an integer. Visual Basic has an option called strict. If you type option strict on at the top of your program, then Visual Basic will only permit widening conversions. For example, an integer can be converted to a double, but a double cannot be converted to an integer if option strict is set to on. You'll end up with a compile error, and then your program won't compile, and you have to fix it before you can finish up with your project. The chart below shows a byte can be converted to an integer, which can be converted to a long, then converted to a decimal, can be converted to a single, and can be converted into a double. Microsoft Windows has two different views for the calculator. On the menu, there's an option there that says View. If you use View Standard, then you get a four-function calculator, and if you view Scientific, then you get a calculator with all sorts of extra options. The order of operation for computing a mathematical equation is different depending on whether you're in the standard calculator or the scientific. If you're in the standard calculator mode, going from left to right, 2 times 3 plus 4 times 5 is going to end up giving you an answer of 50. Because that computes 2 times 3 is a 6, then it adds the 4, giving a 10, and then multiplies by 5, and the answer is a 50. The scientific calculator uses a precedence of operators. Multiplication and division occur before addition and subtraction. 2 times 3 plus 4 times 5 evaluates as follows. 2 times 3 is evaluated to a 6. 4 times 5 is evaluated to a 20. And then we'll get around to doing the addition. Add 6 plus 20, and the answer is 26. So, which ones have... Which one is the correct way for evaluating an expression? 
They're both correct, it's just that they're following different rules. Here is a chart showing precedence. We have parentheses having the highest priority, then exponents, multiply and divide, integer division, modulo, addition and subtraction, and finally the assignment. Operators with the same precedence are evaluated from left to right. For example, if you have plus and minus, then we're going to do whichever one showed up first on the line. You can use parentheses to cause some of the operators to be evaluated first. For example, with no parentheses, 2 times 3 plus 4 times 5 becomes 6 plus 20, and the result is 26. But using some parentheses in there, I could say 2 times, open parentheses, 3 plus 4, close parentheses, times 5, which evaluates, we're going to do the stuff inside the parentheses first. So that becomes 2, and the 3 plus 4 is a 7, so we have 2 times 7 times 5, and the result is 70. If you have a hard time remembering the order of operations, just think of, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So we have, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, and the first letter of each word in please excuse my dear Aunt Sally can be converted into parentheses, exponents, multiplication, addition, subtraction. If you see my Aunt Sally, tell her hello from me. You could do the more simple way and say A equals 10, B equals 20. Then A plus B, which becomes 30, is then stored into A with the assignment operator. The equal sign is the assignment operator that takes the 30 and moves it into the variable A. With the arithmetic assignment operators, we can shorten this down a little bit. If A is a 10, B is a 20, we could say A plus equal B. What happens is it takes A, adds B into A, and stores the result into A. The final result is A this time is also equal to a 30. Arithmetic assignment operators are also available for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and both types of division. The last one on this chart is for strings. It says string first ampersand equal string last. That becomes the same as string first equals string first ampersand string last. The ampersand in strings is a concatenation operator, so it's going to add the second string onto the end of the first string. In this example, if first was Dan, last was McElroy, by the time we're done, when we say string first equals string first ampersand string last, then string first is going to be Dan McElroy. String last is still going to be McElroy because it's not changed. This is the end of the video presentation on arithmetic operators and precedents for Visual Basic. Make good use of this knowledge in your programs.